Introducing the Galaxy A05, one of Samsung's most affordable devices yet, and is priced at $119. While you might not have a fingerprint scanner, the A05 boosts one of the best builds and screen we've seen for this price point. It's sleek, it's stylish, and the display is surprisingly good. However, there's no sugar coat in it. This device is kind of slow. So there's another version of the AO5, which is the AO5S. You get a triple camera setup of 50 megapixel, 2 megapixel macro, 2 megapixel depth. It comes with a different chipset, Snapdragon 680. You get 90 hertz refresh rate, and it comes for a price of $139. The key difference here is that the AO5S comes with a triple camera setup, a better chipset, and a better refresh rate. For the display of the AO5, it comes with a 6.7 inch LCD screen. It's a decent display with a resolution of 720p. The viewing experience is quite good for 720p. On the front, you notice a U-notch at the top of the screen, which houses the front camera. Design is different from other budget phones like the Redmi 13C and Spark 20, which has a hole punch display. The U-notch gives the Galaxy A05 a cheaper look. We also don't get Gorilla Grass protection for this phone, but for the price point, I wasn't expecting it. In contrast to certain budget phones, such as the Redmi 13C and the Infinix Hot 40, which comes with 90Hz, the Galaxy A05 features a 16Hz refresh rate. A higher refresh rate with devices normally means a smoother experience and a better animation with devices. For the design, Samsung keeps things simple and we don't get a fingerprint scanner on this device. Instead, you unlock it using your face. However, the face unlock might not work perfectly, especially in the dark or if the phone isn't positioned right. The phone has a single speaker, so we're not getting stereo sound, but it does a good job for your audio needs. You find the volume and power button on the right conveniently placed for your easy access. For charging and connecting, the AO5 uses a Type-C port, plus the phone still includes the old 3.5mm jack, so you get wired headphones without any force. Lastly, the SIM card slot can be found on the left. For performance, the Galaxy A05 runs on the MediaTek Helio G85 chipset. It's a chip that's been around for 4 years, so it's not the newest, but it balances power efficiency and performance. While it's good for regular tasks and games, it might struggle a bit with demanding apps. Also, loading this phone with a lot of apps or files will make it sluggish. If you're someone that loads a lot of apps on your phone or you're a hoarder with files, you will struggle with this phone. For Antutu Benchmark, the G85 scores 194K, putting it in an entry-level category. This score suggests decent performance for your daily use and moderate gaming. For the gaming experience, if you enjoy games like PUBG and Call of Duty, Samsung Galaxy A05 can handle them, but it's best to stick to medium graphics settings for smoother gameplay. The 4GB feels responsive, but considering the high demand of games and app, 8GB would have been much better. In the camera department, the Galaxy A05 comes with a 50 megapixel main lens. It takes pretty good pictures in well-lit environments. You get clear, detailed shots, but it's not as great in low light. Night mode works, but it's slow, and there might be a little green in your pictures. For portrait mode, you get okay photos with good blur background. The portrait mode on the Galaxy A05 is decent. It's not top much, but it adds a little depth to your pictures. For video quality, recording videos is fine. It supports up to 1080p resolution, giving you decent videos for sharing on social media and keeping memories. For selfie, you get an 8 megapixel front camera, which gives okay photos, but you might notice a little reddish tint in your skin tone. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something to be aware of. For software, the Galaxy A05 comes with Android 13 out of the box. Now what's really interesting about this device is that the A05 is one of the only devices in its price range that gets Android 14 or even updates over the years. For the battery, the A05 gets a 5000mAh battery as last year, ensuring your phone stays alive all day with you. You also get 25W charging support. This means you can get your phone charged swiftly whenever you need. Unlike the predecessor, the AO4, the AO5 doesn't come with a charging brick in the box. So you will need to buy a charger or use your old one. So as usual, pros and cons before I give my conclusion. Pro number one about this device, it has 5000mAh battery and 25W charging, which is really commendable. Most devices on this price point, the highest I've seen is 18W. So kudos. Pro number two, amazing display. It's an LCD panel, but although shy 720p, but an LCD panel that is really bright for this price point, it's really cool.
Pro number three, the software. Samsung is one of the only brands that will actually give you three to four year software updates for this price point. Most devices would not even get one year. So having Android 14 on this device is really, really cool. Let's talk about the cons. Con number one, the chipset, G85. It's four years old. It's, it's alarming, it's horrible. I don't know why they did that. Yes, it might be budgeting, but it's too slow. Con number two, the RAM. The Nigerian version comes with 4 gig RAM. I heard you get 6 gig in Europe, which is still not fast enough. Bigger RAM will help with multitasking and the rest. At least 8 gig RAM should have been used on this. And my final con, which is the camera, it gives this reddish skin tone when you're using the selfie camera. I think it can be better even if Samsung is trying to budget. But at the end, it's still a good device. And for my conclusion, is it value for your money? I would say yes and no. Yes. For this price point, it's actually hard to see a perfect device, especially with the chipset, the screen, and user experience. But Samsung got away with some things. We had a good screen. We had good battery. What else did we have? Good design too. So they just had a problem with the chipset and the RAM option. So the device is not bad. We like actually recommend it for someone. Not sure, but it's something I can buy for myself. Anyways, like, share, and drop a comment below. Tell me what you think about my review, and I'll see you guys in the next one.